Hi, welcome back to Live and Breathe Horses at Centre Equestry La Luce. Today we've got the last part for the moment because I'm sure there'll be other things I think of as I go on with the work with my horses, maybe some digestions coming in from you guys. So probably there will be a follow up. But for now, this is the last part of our series about um, ghosts and scary places and spooky things and horse eating objects. That comes from my, a very good friend of mine. And she always would be riding out and she would say, watch out, that's a horse eating rock. You know, for some reason, whatever rock and the horses would always spook at it. And this is a bit what we've talked about through all of this. So when you say, oh, watch out, that's a horse eating rock. Are you actually creating a horse to spook at that? You know, you're definitely putting the possibility out there for it to happen. So, um, yes, that's very much what we've been talking about um, going through all of this. Anyway, today, um, three more practical um, hints that might help. The first one is to use a companion. Um, this is probably very obvious and it depends on your situation if you have that opportunity or not to be able to do. Um, you know, Umo very much likes Muñeco. And the other day with the wind, I thought, right, if it's windy again tomorrow, I might just try it with Muñeco there. Because I think I'd been three, four days with the wind getting a bit better, but... Mm. You know, it's that thing of making it easy for your horse to do the right thing. So, yes, it's good to have a challenge and work through things, but also to keep in mind that we want to um, always help our horse and make it easier for him. So I was going to take Muñeco down and just um, tie him up there to the fence. You know, if you have a helper to walk another horse around, that can give your horse a lot of confidence and... Um, diffuse a difficult situation so it's very much about seeing what works um, I didn't do that in the end because the wind disappeared the next day so let's see what happens if it gets windy again so the next one today is about the jaw um, this is a huge subject uh, the mobility of the jaw is very important I am going to do a uh, Morisco story about this because I had somebody asking about it but when the horse gets um, especially into freeze and gets very nervous, you know, everything gets all tight and tense. And you notice yourself when you get tense, you often block your jaw. So with the horse, when they're in that, just asking them to do that and release the jaw. You know, if you have a bit, you can do that. Um, if you mobilize the hindquarters, that's also connected to the jaw. So if you do that correctly, you can also cause the jaw to release. Or on the ground, I sometimes just um, stick my finger in the corner of the mouth and just ask them to, to move the jaw. And that can be very transformative. You know, if you're tense and you just start to chew, it, it really helps. Um, I had a little mare once who used to get so terrified of things and she used to get really blocked when we were out. And I used to um, just carry a treat and give her, lean down and give her a treat or let her grab a bit of something if she wasn't too blocked to do that, which she often was. It's like, um, I used to call it a chupetti, like giving a baby a dummy. So, of course, um, treats is not the ideal way to go and I'm not in general in favour of them. I do use them occasionally, maybe for more extreme things like that, with the awareness that I hope to get... Um, better at some point that I can find other ways to do this without treats but <coughs> it can help in things like that you know just to break through that freeze and oh, get them to move the jaw and relax as well but yeah like I say just with the finger that's fine so the other thing um, I wanted to point out just to kind of finish off and wrap it up is about always being aware of your horse's expression. I mean, we have touched on this throughout the whole thing, but this is key in everything we do, and especially in this. You know, pay attention to the expression and the state of being of the horse. We've talked a lot about our own, because with the spooking, if you can get there before it happens, notice it coming up, um, <laughs> then... Um, you can maybe diffuse it before it even comes. You know, that is, of course, the ideal situation. And when we're paying attention to the expression and the energy level of our horse, we can often do something about it just in time. 
And the last one I'm just going to throw in here to finish off is about having time. You know, it's that thing about when you go about something as if you've not got much time, it's going to take forever. And when you approach it like you've got all the time in the world, you get it done quicker. So especially if you know that there's going to be a spooky thing coming up and you're like going out with the intention of I'm going to work on this today, make sure you don't have a time limit, that you can stay in that project with that thing until... Um, you get at least a bit of a solution, a bit of relaxation or a little bit of a change, you know, that you're not like, oh my God, I've got to stop now. And that happens to be on a moment where the horse is up there or with a um, nervous expression, then you're not going to um, set yourself up well for the next lesson. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's been a lot of stuff in there. Like I said, I'm sure there'll be some more things to add on. I hope it's been helpful for you in some ways. Please do let us know. Thank you, Muñeco. Yes, thank you, Muñeco. Um, <laughs> keep tuning into the light and we'll see you next time.